Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Love Life Heart Confessions with intuitive heart healer, the love guru, Blair Allison. Blair can be found on the web at loveguru.net and datingtipsfordudes.com. And now your host, Blair Allison. Hey guys, welcome. So, you know, that, that intro music keeps on playing double. I don't know why it happens, but we're just going with it. Uh, this is Blair. Welcome. Welcome. I'm happy you guys are here with me today. It has been such a crazy, busy week, lots of full energy. I hope everyone's okay out there. We had a new moon last night. There's a, I think that was last night. Um, and then there's a solar eclipse tonight, or well, that was last night too. But it's over these, over these two days. So don't do anything crazy over these, these, these two days because you might be regretting it later. Um, just because there's just so much energy floating around. And um, just a little bit of a tip, if you are not familiar with the moon energy, um, which is definitely really strong right now, you want to make a wish. Now is a perfect time to set your intentions of what you want to maybe happen over the next month or just be really, really clear with the universe of what you want to be attracting in your life, not what you don't want, what you want. So that is key for this time. Um, So I just wanted to share that a little bit with you guys. Um, since it is so strong this week, I just feel like it's such an amazing opportunity to be manifesting. Uh, today, we have a really great show. We have a really great guest. I'm really excited for her. Her name is Barb. And she has three kids with two different men, and she's never been married to either of them. She's not married to either of them, and she's not married now. So we're going to examine, we're going to examine, like, how does this happen? And, you know, did she want to get married? Did she not want to get married? And how do you end up having so many kids um, like that? And, and it hasn't been working for her. So I'm excited about that. But before we go into um, talking to Barb, I wanted to let you know that I am an intuitive heart healer, which means that I have the gift to open and heal your heart so you can attract love. And I do private one-on-one phone sessions. I do in-person sessions, too, if you're in New Jersey. Um, But usually I work over the phone. And if you would like a session, uh, that information is on my website at loveguru.net. And I'm able to, like, just by talking to you, I'm able to really pick up either how you're blocking yourself from attracting love, and I'm able to start healing your heart, working with you to heal your heart, Or I will teach you love attracting exercises, which is like, how do I attract love into my life? Because you have the power to be bringing anything that you want into your life that includes love, especially love, and exactly the type of relationship that you want. So if you're like, I have no idea how to do that, and you're feeling maybe helpless or frustrated in love, and I know that because I've been there, um, if you want to hear about my story with that, you could go to my, my other website. It's maryblair.com. That was from several years ago, but that's how I found out my truth. Um, that's how I learned my lessons of how to be attracting love. So you can read that story at www.mary, M-A-R-R-Y, Blair, B-L-A-I-R-E.com. And if you'd like uh, to set up a, a time for us to chat, the, the sessions are one hour long the heart healing or love attracting sessions, you could go to my website, loveguru.net. All right, and when you're there, sign up for the newsletter. You'll get a free audio and a free exercise of how you could start attracting love. So um, thank you to everybody who has sent me a friend request on here and everybody who's favorited my show. If you haven't yet, definitely do that. You'll be reminded of when the shows happen. This show goes on every Tuesday, I mean, I'm sorry, every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern. And you know what? I've been getting a lot of emails from you guys saying, hey, Blair, why don't you be on more times a week? So I'm considering that. I may end up having a, um, a show, another show, once a week where I answer your questions, and that's all what we do. So send me emails. If, if that's something that you're into or any kind of feedback that you'd like to give me about the show, definitely go for it. Um, Before we bring Barb on, I do want to let you know uh, we had an amazing call last week. It really stirred up a lot of you. Uh, I got a lot of emails 
The show was titled Blair's First Threesome. And on that call, the second half of that show, we had Mickey on, who is single, lonely, and hating it. And, oh, my God, I got so many emails about that guy. I think that really struck a nerve. Um, I know I definitely was feeling that um, back several years ago. And I'm going to do a show dedicated to him and dedicated to being single, lonely, and hating it. So just to kind of give you a, you know, a preview of what's ahead, next Wednesday I have another woman coming on, and she is in love with a married man. It's kind of like this whole threesome thing going on. And I don't have the information up on the site just yet, but I'm going to put it on right after the show's over. So that's coming up next week, Wednesday, 2 p.m. Eastern. And then the week after that, I'm going to, I'm going to dedicate a show to being single, lonely, and hating it. And um, I'll take your phone calls during that show. I'm going to teach a little bit. We'll see what happens, you know. Um, and then oh, the only thing that we're doing something different today is I'm going to be interviewing Barb for the, for the most part of the show. And then I used to share tips of what I picked up, what I learned, and how it could help you the week afterwards. I'm actually going to share that at the end of today's show. So stay tuned. Okay, so before we bring um, Barb on, I'm going to go to a quick a quick commercial, and then we'll come back with Barb, all right? Hang on. I'll see you right back. Do you feel frustrated by the dating scene? You go out to meet men but never seem to find what you're looking for. Today, I'm here to tell you why that happens. Quite simply, it's because you haven't taken the steps to prepare yourself for love. Don't feel bad. It happens to the best of us. And the good news is, it's easily fixed. See, all these years you've been dating what I like to call the old way. You search the internet, you go to bars, you ask friends to match you up, you go to singles events. And when you go out, you're always on the lookout because you never know when he is going to show up. But instead of Mr. Wonderful showing up, you end up wondering where he is. Dating doesn't need to be hard, and it doesn't need to be frustrating. The Prepare Yourself for Love program will share with you an easier way to date, an effortless way. It teaches you in a way that is not talked about in mainstream culture. You won't learn these techniques anywhere else. The Prepare Yourself for Love program is a natural, effortless way that brings the one to you rather than you're going out and looking for him. When you learn the techniques in the Prepare Yourself for Love program, your one gets drawn to you. So if you're ready for a long-term, committed, romantic, loving relationship, get the Prepare Yourself for Love program now by going to www.loveguru.net slash prepareyourself.html. Once again, get the Prepare Yourself for Love program at www dot l o v e g u r u dot net slash prepare yourself dot h t m l so you can finally attract the love you are looking for when you've prepared yourself for love relationships come to you there's no effort or hard work required go to www.loveguru.net slash prepare yourself dot h t m l to pick up your copy of the prepare yourself for love program that's www.loveguru.net slash prepareyourself.html Do you hate small talk? Think it's boring, a waste of time, and goes nowhere? Discover how you can make a quick connection. Most singles don't realize that small talk actually gives you a lot of information. It can be fun, easy, and a great screening process to know for sure if a guy is right for you. Introducing the Get a Date Success Package. Included are three powerful audios. You'll learn how to find a date in five minutes or less with someone you actually connect with. The program is quick and to the point. You'll be taken through four steps that will tell you, without a doubt, if a person you are talking to has the qualities you're looking for. No more wasting your time talking to losers. Say goodbye to dead-end conversations. The Get a Date Success Package also includes Getting Guys Flirting 101. During this one-hour audio, you'll learn to look at the dating and mating process differently. You'll discover the power you have over men, not in a bad way, but in a way to get them to come over and talk to you. Once you tap into this power, you'll be a master at the dating game. But wait, there's more. You'll also get the audio, 
uncovering two levels of small talk for better connections. See, most singles do small talk wrong, and that's why they hate it. Stop forcing the relationship. Stop forcing the connection when he's really not right for you. Learn what to say and how to say it, and you'll end up loving small talk. Get these three eye-opening audios that will transform the way you meet and pick up men. Go to www.loveguru.net forward slash getadate.html. That's www.loveguru.net forward slash getadate.html. Once again, www.loveguru.net forward slash getadate.html. Okay, we're back. Welcome, everybody. So, uh, once again, this is Blair. I'm an intuitive heart healer known as the Love Guru, and you are listening to Love Life Heart Confessions. And I am going to bring on our special guest of today. Her name is Barb. She's in her 30s. She has three kids. I'm going to ask her about the ages in a second here because I forgot um, the age range with two separate men. So, um, welcome, Barb. Are you there? Hi, I'm here. Hi, Blair. Hey, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so first off, I'm going to say Barb is an amazing person. I um, I happen to know Barb. Uh, I haven't met her face-to-face just yet, but um, Barb was actually doing some work for me a couple of years ago, and we became friends. And I've always been really curious about her love life, and I'm so happy that she accepted my invitation to be on the show because now we get to talk about personal stuff, not just business stuff. And I get to really, like, dig into your love life, right? (laughs) Yeah, very cool, definitely. (laughs) So so tell me, like, first off, tell me what's, like, the age range of your girls. Okay, um, I have three daughters, and they're 11, 9, and 4. Okay. Now, well, you know what, actually, because I know some things have changed since we had originally spoke, but what is your, like, love life man situation at this moment? (laughs) Um, It's... It's a little complicated. I'm, no, I haven't been with the father of my first two daughters, have the same father, and I haven't been with him um, for about um, nine years. And then the other father, Frank, he and I stopped living together about a year and a half ago. And then um, we've been trying to work it out, trying to work it out. And then just last week, I started dating again. So... It's a little mm. complicated. <laughs> so this is like another guy. This is a new guy. It is a new guy, yes. Okay. Does does Frank know about this guy? I'm, maybe I'm jumping a little bit, but I'm already interested. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? I told Frank back in May that, um, you know, if we weren't progressing and, you know, things didn't seem to change, certain things that we both discussed, that I was going to see other people. And, you know, so I did let him know I was – interested in seeing other people but it didn't I didn't start seeing other people until this person last week and um I haven't told him specifically no so okay and yeah I'm glad that you're dating because you're a sexy mama so you should be out there and like living your life yeah yeah it Um, feels good it's cool yeah it's nice to be wanted right (laughs) oh yeah definitely so okay so let's go let's 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 talk about um the topic for today uh, as far as like what happened with let's go back to the first two daughters and this first man when did you guys start when did you start dating around what age or whatever um did you start dating him um i dated him in my 20s um and i met him when i was finishing up college i was just about to graduate um and a lot of my friends were getting married so, and I didn't have um, a boyfriend, so I think I really just really wanted a boyfriend, and even though I saw a lot of signs in the beginning that it just wasn't right and he wasn't the person for me, I, um, you know, tried to force it and really tried to, you know, kid myself into thinking that it would work, it would work. Um, and so that's kind of how we started, got together, and then about two years after we were together, uh, I did get pregnant with my first daughter. Um, mm. yeah. Okay, wait, 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 one second here. So, <laughs> before you got pregnant, are you having like daydreams about like marriage and all that with him? 
No, you know what? I never really wanted to get married. I, I um, since I was like a young teenager, marriage was something to me that kind of really turned me off. I felt like it would be um, like I felt trapped when I thought of marriage, and um, you know, I think it was maybe because of the people I knew who were married and what their lives seemed like, um, and then also, you know, people who I dated. I guess I could never see myself being with um. And actually, you know, not feeling that feeling. So I, I didn't. Um, I really just wanted a, a boyfriend, you know, a serious boyfriend. Mm-hmm. And, okay, so you're dating this guy. You're just wanting a serious boyfriend. But then you get pregnant. Mm-hmm. So was this, like, not using any protection or, like, it just an accident? Or, like, how did that um, happen? No, you know, I totally knew what I was doing, and I definitely wanted that. I kind of felt like um, my biological time clock was ticking away. And, you know, like I said, a lot of my friends were marrying and um, having kids, and I didn't really want the marriage thing, but I definitely wanted the kid thing. So, um, you know, it wasn't planned per se, but I was really happy when it happened. Right, okay. Okay. So, okay, so you get pregnant, or you realize that you're pregnant, and I'm try- like, I, there's so many different thoughts going on in my mind here. So, <laughs> like, <laughs> are you excited to tell him? Or are you afraid what how he's going to react? Um. Well, you know what happened is I got um. We were actually in Key West on vacation. And I was really, really sick. I had really um, intense morning sickness. So we kind of figured it out together. So it wasn't like I knew and I I told him, you know. um, But when we figured it out together, both of us were happy. There wasn't a bad reaction to it. Okay. So there was never any thought as far as, like, there was always a, there was always the belief that like okay we're gonna have the baby, absolutely. Mhm. Okay. Very excited. Okay. okay. Now, so at that point, like, and are you feeling ready to have a kid at this point? Because you're in your twenties. Um. Yeah, I was. I was. Um. Like I said, I was really sick, and I actually ended up being on an IV for twenty weeks and in and out of the hospital with a condition I had with the pregnancy. So. It was more like I was so sick and it was just focusing on having a healthy baby. Um, And I didn't live with him either, and I didn't live with him when I was pregnant. I didn't move in until after I had the baby. Okay, are you in the mid-20s during this or late-20s or what? Like my mid-20s, yes. Oh, my God. Okay. (laughs) I don't know how you're doing this. I can't even, like... I'm in my early 30s, and I can't even, like, picture it now. (laughs) Yeah, it was a little crazy, you know, so it's kind of like the um, day-to-day getting by and, you know, focusing on having that baby. It was like running a race and just getting to that finish line of having a healthy baby, and that was my complete focus. So were you living with, like, say, your mom or something during this time? I mean, who was helping you? I mean, pregnancy is, like, for real. (laughs) Yeah, um yeah, well I had been I had my own apartment when I got pregnant, so when I got so sick I got rid of the apartment and I moved back in with my parents. And my okay. sister was also she would come over a lot and she was a big help, um, you know, emotionally and everything else with the situation. And like was there any kind of like gossip or like judgment of people around you being like, Hey, you're having a ba- well, first off, were they happy that you were having a baby? Um, my parents are um, very Irish Catholic, so, you know, I dreaded telling them. Actually, when you talk about, you know, were you afraid to tell someone, I was afraid to tell my family. Um, but their reaction was just really cool. They said, you know, okay, you know, we'll, we will love to have a grandchild. And, and I think also I was so sick that – it kind of changed the focus of, um, you know, that anger that you could have or that disappointment in your child to just wanting your child to be okay and then your grandchild to be okay. So I think I, I definitely there was, you know, eyes probably rolled, but um, they were really supportive about everything. And there was no thought or talk about, like, hey, abortion? 
That was no, no option? No. No, okay. I mean, I really wanted to have a baby, you know. I was thrilled. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so let's <laughs> talk about, like, as far as the relationship between the two of you during this pregnancy. I mean, I'm assuming you're going to be, like, moody, emotional, whatever, all this hormonal stuff is going on. Mm-hmm, so, like, this didn't affect your relationship at all as far as, like, hey, I'm not feeling secure or does he love me, does he not love me? Like, I don't know. I mean, I just feel like my mind would be going everywhere. Yeah, you know, um, we didn't have a really great relationship, um, but, you know, it was okay. And like I said, I had really wanted a boyfriend and was so focused on that that I overlooked a lot of stuff that I probably shouldn't have. Um but when I got pregnant, our relationship pretty much um, fell apart. You know, it just went from not so good to bad to worse at that point. Wait, okay, hold on. Isn't this stressful? Isn't that stressful that, like, I'm carrying this kid's baby and, like, I, I hate his guts and now I'm, like, going to have to look at him through the baby? You know, like, that, that's what I'm thinking. It was stressful and it was also really sad. You know, it was really sad for me because, you know, I think I was really immature and very selfish and, um, you know, just wanted what I wanted, which was a baby, and didn't really think about how it would affect people in my life, including and especially my child, down the road. So it was, you know, it was definitely stressful, but um, I think the fact that I was so sick and it was just, I was so focused on having this child and having a healthy child um, that I kind of just dealt with the rest of it, you know, just, figured whatever happens is going to happen. Mm. And as far as like, oh, goodness, we have a lot of callers, by the way. Um, Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, everyone who's like on, on hold for the callers, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get to questions today, but, I mean, you're welcome to hang on and listen. And, like, I just wanted to give you a heads up as far as, because I'm doing the new format, so I'm not sure if I'm going to have time for if you're asking about your own love life. Um, like, I may start doing another show to help you guys with that. So just wanted to let you know if you're listening and on hold. Um, But you're welcome to stay there. It's nice to look at your numbers. (laughs) So, um, all right. You know, I could like, I just, it's a very sensitive subject to me apparently. I, um, yeah, I, I don't know if it's like I'm kind of feeling the pain from that then or I just like, I can't imagine. Um, so, like, what is the thought as far as, like, okay, I'm going to have this baby. Like, were you able to support this baby on your own? And, like, were your parents saying, like, we're going to help you raise the baby? And, like, how does that go down? Um, No, I, you know, I had just graduated college. When I graduated, I was pregnant, and I had had, um, you know, a teaching job that because of how sick I was, I had to give up, um, you know, because this all happened in, you know, May and through the summer. So I had to give up a teaching job because I was basically bedridden for 20 weeks. So, um, you know, we were going to try and work it out. And it was, you know, after I have the baby, or I think I moved in with him maybe two weeks before I had her, it was, you know, we're going to work it out. And he, take it that way, you know, he worked, had a job, and um, then we would just see, you know, about me going back to work or what would happen. Mm. And And this guy was like the same age as you or older, younger? Um, he's like 10 years older. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's another element to this story. <laughs> You're full of surprises over there. Uh, um, <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, so we're figuring around you're 25, he's 35, maybe? Yeah, about. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. Was So did he have other kids? No, uh, uh-uh, no other kids. Never been married. Um, mm-mm. Okay. He he was really like you know oh I've been waiting for you for so long. Um, really? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that kind of mentality. But he was, you know, there were problems with it. So. Um, just out of curiosity, because it's like my thing. What's your sign and what was his sign? What's his sign? Okay. Um, my sign is. I'm on the cusp of Capricorn and Aquarius. I'm the 22nd okay. of January. Okay. And he is, um, I think he's a Libra. Or hmm. no. Okay. Okay. He's September 
I forget his birthday now. Okay. I think he's a Libra. I'm pretty sure he's a Libra. Well, if it's the end of September, then it would be a Libra. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's like September 29th or something. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, that's a Libra. Um, all right. So, like, yeah, the, I mean, the Capricorn side of you is, like, very planning out stuff. Um, <laughs> and you're kind of flowing with it a little bit here. Okay, so, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think that, like, you're moving in with this guy, like you guys are trying to make it work, whatever. I, you know, that I think whether a relationship is going to work or not, I think is one element of like stress. And then like on top of that, it's like, hey, I'm going to be giving birth soon. Were you afraid of giving birth, by the way? Absolutely. I was petrified, definitely. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, all right, it comes time, you're going to give birth. Like where were you, where was he, and like how'd that go? Um. I was two weeks late with my first daughter, and I was trying all these crazy old wives' tales to um, have her. So one was eat Chinese food. So we ordered Chinese food that night, and um, I no sooner finished my last bite than my water broke, and he was right there with me, and we just went immediately to the hospital. Okay. So was he supportive through the birth? Um, not, I mean, he was. Not really. I mean, he was. He was there. He was physically there, but, you know, he would, you know, he slept in the chair. And, um, yeah. What do you mean, as you're giving birth? Well, I ended up having a C-section with okay. her. Um, okay. And then he was in there for that, but, um, you know, I had a C-section for her, and when she was, she was in uh, stress, and then when they took her out from me, she wasn't breathing, so they had a resuscitator, and she ended up in the um, neonatal intensive care for a week. Um, and I was, you know, laying down on this operating table and said, you know, you know, what's going on? Go find her. Go get her. And he was like, it's okay. Don't worry about it. You know, just relax. Or, you know, so he wasn't really, you know. Oh my God, I still want to kick his ass. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he There's was my protectiveness. Right. Yeah, he was just kind of like, whatever, you know, and I was, they just took the baby away, they took her away, and I was, you know, that's not what I had seen in the movies, I always thought, you know, you get to hold her, and they say, your baby's okay, and, you know, that didn't happen, so, um, yeah, you know, he wasn't really supportive, my sister was there, and my mom, um, you know, and so they were, they helped me, but um, I wouldn't say he was supportive, no. So what were you thinking, like, while this is going on, are you just shutting down emotionally or are you just, like, raging inside of, like, what a jerk off, you know, like, or, like, what, what's the mind, what is, what's, what are you thinking? You mean time? at the moment, like, during the yeah, whole? Yeah, like, yeah. I just wanted my like baby big... to be okay. okay, you know what I mean? Like, it was still that focus and since it kind of went prolonged with, I didn't get to see her after I had her, um, you know, it was just that whole focus on, is my baby okay? Is she going to be okay? You know, and they were resuscitating her. And so, and the, her APGARs were really low, and they told me they didn't know she'd make it. So my focus wasn't on him. I I couldn't have cared less, really, about him. But there him. wasn't even any thought of, like, this guy's a jerk and, like, nothing. I, already, I think I kind of already knew that. <laughs> so it wasn't a big okay. um, surprise because during the pregnancy he wasn't supportive. He was... um. You know, we lived separately, which was my choice. Um, but, you know, my parents, I was on an IV, so I had a lot of care I needed, and a visiting nurse came and stuff. But, um, you know, my parents were really there for me, and sometimes they wanted a break to, you know, go out and do stuff, and they would ask him to come over, and he would say things like, oh, well, there's a certain TV show coming on at such and such time, so I can't make it, you know. Okay. Um, so stuff like that, so, you know. I, I pretty much had already, you know, understood, not expected too much of him at that point. Okay. So let's fast forward a little bit. You have the baby. You guys are, like, you're thinking he's already a jerk, whatever. But then you end up having, you end up getting pregnant by him again. How does that happen? Oh, God. Well, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. But, well, well there, maybe, like, obviously you guys got back together, like, you're thinking he's okay again because, um, I mean, what happened after you had the baby? Okay, after I had the baby, I mean, we lived together, and um, you know what, I really wasn't happy, but it was, um, you know, one of those things that um, 
you know, that's when I started, like, getting angry and raging, like, when he wasn't a supportive father or partner to me, you know, so when my baby was okay, that's when that all started, and, um, you know, what happened when I got pregnant with my second daughter, I really had planned on leaving and was trying to plan it, and then I think I had really low self-esteem. Um, he was kind of uh, emotionally abusive and verbally abusive, and my self-esteem just sank, and I had gained so much weight with her, um, 80 pounds. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. So, you know, my self-esteem was low, and I I didn't just move back to my parents or just leave. I kind of just kept dragging it out. And then what actually happened is um, <laughs> he had a surprise birthday party for me, and we hadn't – we had had sex maybe once or twice um, since I had my daughter, and he had a surprise birthday party for me. So somewhere in my mind, I was like, oh, that's so cool. And I actually slept with him that night, and then I got pregnant with my daughter. Wait, but you're not using condoms or anything? Nope. Nope. I was being completely, yeah, stupid and, you know, not real smart about it and you know unfortunately it's the kids who are the ones who you know pay for those kind of mistakes that people make and the selfishness and I've learned that now you know um, Mm -hmm. definitely but no I wasn't it was really stupid but you know of course I love my daughter and so you know once you have your kids then it's like well you know I mean you wouldn't go back Okay, so what is the living situation? Like, okay, so you got pregnant again. Did you tell him this time? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I didn't know I was pregnant with her until I was like five months pregnant because, you know, that was really the only time it could have happened, and I just thought there's no way. There's no way I'm pregnant. It didn't even cross my mind. And then finally I didn't know what else to do, but I got a pregnancy test, and I was pregnant. So I was shocked, you know, I was I was really surprised. Um, and then, yeah, I told him. So. <laughs> and now what was his reaction this time? Um, you know, I think it was just kind of whatever, you know, not roll one way or the other. I don't even really remember telling him. I really remember my own feeling of, holy crap, you know. Um, and I remember and again, telling no, my parents. And again, like abortion, no, that's not an option at all, ever? Mm. Like, no. is it too uh-uh. late by then, I think, maybe? I don't know. Like yeah, it is. Right? I mean, I think definitely. Okay. But I don't think I would have really considered it. Um, okay. You know, because I think somewhere in me I had the hope that things would turn around, that we could work things out, that, you know, we could raise these kids as a family. Um, okay. You know, and I also thought, I remember after I had my second daughter thinking, okay, now it's going to work. Now it's okay. Mm. So financially, who's supporting these kids? Who's supporting you? During, at, right during now? During all this time. No, like during <laughs> all this he's time. He's working. Like he, he's working. And he's he was, sending you money or something? Well, I was living with him, you know, after, right before Mia was born, right before my oldest daughter was born. So we were still living together when I was pregnant with my second daughter and had her. We were living together, so... Okay. All right. So was your life all about like just raising your girl like your girl and pregnant now? Was like is it was it just about like being the mother or like what was going on as far as like your love life? Um, what, after I had my second daughter? Yeah, Uh, like yeah, I mean after and like you know, during the time that you're pregnant, like what was like did you just shut this off again? Like, did, is this just like whatever? This is the way life is, or something? Or, um, you know, I really wasn't happy, and I had, I definitely was. Um, he wasn't, you know, real supportive or loving, and you know, didn't come home from work some nights, and you know, would come home really late, and you know, wouldn't do stuff with my first daughter and I. You know, I remember saying, "Oh, let's go for a walk to." you know, the park and this and that, and he would say, you guys go, I'm going to go jog on my own. Um, <laughs> so mm-hmm. I, I really felt very lonely and, you know, was getting very sad and depressed, um, you know, at this point. And, you know, I ended up leaving him for good when my second daughter was about four months old. 
so, you know, I didn't last long with that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it takes, like, I mean, you're talking about, you know, your self-esteem not being so high, but also, like, I feel like the other side to that is, like, there takes some, like, deep, deep strength to be able to, like, deal with that for so long. Um I mean, it's just wow. Like I, wow. I'll just say wow. I'm gonna hold my comments till the end of the show, everybody. But like, um, we're so I'm just gonna try to stick to interviewing you. Okay. <laughs> um. Okay. So then you leave him. You bring both your kids back. Is it back to your parents' house then? Um, I went to my parents' house for about two weeks, and then I, you know, and during that time I got a job, I got a place, and then I was on my own. How are you even supposed to work when you have two kids like that? You know, I did it. I um, My degree was in education, and I got a job at a um, preschool and was able to bring my kids to work with me. So, you mm. know, I would get up and, you know, feed the baby during the night and go back to sleep and then get up around 4.30, and I had to be at work at 6 a.m., a few minutes before 6, and, um, you know, I'd get up and, pack breakfast and get them there and, you know, do what I had to do and get home. And, you know, it wasn't fun. It wasn't like a good, happy time of my life. You know, it was kind of just getting through the day and supporting um, my family, you know, supporting mm-hmm. my kids and taking care of it was just what I did. Mm-hmm. Like survival mode, you know. Exactly, exactly. So, okay, so you're living your life, you're going on. How do you meet this new guy? Because now we have a third baby. So how do you, like, let's fast forward. Like, you know, are you having relationships in between here with other guys? Like, what's happening now that you finally meet this this new guy, um, Frank? Okay. Um, Well, I met Frank after I had been split up from Tim for a year and a half. Um, And I had... And that's just really when I first started dating because um, I had still, you know, I I just stayed single and not dated and kind of just nursed my broken heart, um, you know, and just dealt with the life. You know, I was so busy. It was so crazy. Just, you know, all I did was work and sleep and take care of the kids. Um, And then as they got a little bit older, you know, I, I met Frank and we just had mutual friends and you know, we just hit it off, and, you know, he he didn't meet my kids until we had been seeing each other for about four years. <laughs> um, you know, I kept but it very... But he knew that you had kids, though, right? He, yeah, he knew I had kids, but I just kept it very separated. I was very protective of them, and I didn't want that extra thing, like, okay, if this doesn't work out, my kids get hurt, too. Mm-hmm. You know, I just wanted to kind of keep that hurt to myself if things didn't work out rather than have it on them too because I thought I had already hurt them um, by the choices I had made you know that it didn't work out with her dad I felt really bad about that so did did Frank this new guy did was he ever married did he does he have kids no never married um never had any um kids just has our the daughter we have and yeah um I was only his second girlfriend, so. Okay. And this guy was, like, in his 30s or so, right? Or um, 20, late 20s? Yeah, mm-hmm, late 20s. Okay. Um, okay, so then, all right, so I'm going to fast forward a little bit because I'm looking and we only have, like, say, 20 minutes left or so, but um, it goes so fast. <laughs> um, okay, so... What happens now? Like, okay, you come out of that those that other relationship. You have the two kids. You felt bad about that. Were you thinking about like lessons learned, things along those lines? That like now you're getting into a new relationship, and does the talk come up that like I want the man to treat me like X Y Z, or if I'm going to have kids like, did you want to have kids again? Because I, I mean, I I want to focus a little bit more just on the kids since that's kind of like the title of the the show, but. Like, were you thinking about having kids again? And, like, if you were going to, like, did this time you want to be married? Or, like, so what are the, where are you at, you know, your mindset now? Um, no, I was, you know, um, I was very protective of my kids. And, 
um, wasn't really, I was afraid of relationships completely. You know, I was just scared to death. And, you know, my relationship with Frank was very, you know, unique, um, um, if not, you know, unhealthy. But, you know, we didn't do anything really with the kids. And we didn't do anything at all with the kids. And so, um, you know, we had our problems too because he didn't, you know, show me a lot of attention or, you know, this and that, make much of an effort. Um, so I started seeing someone else, and then as soon as he found out that, he kind of came, you know, running back and, you know, Barb, I can do what you want and I can make it work and, you, you know, I know you don't ask for much, <laughs> which I didn't, <laughs> barely anything. And, um, you know, and he told me, he, you, I want to have a baby with you and, you know, get, like, spend our lives together and, all that, um, and at that point, he didn't bring up marriage, but in my head, yes, it started then. I was like, you know what, I really want to marry this guy. And what would be the reason for marrying then? You know, I think it was just that I was so afraid to go back down that same road that I had, um, you know, and once I was pregnant, I was like, oh, my God, you know, how, how am I doing this all over again, you know? this is not what I want to be doing. You know, I had my children then and um, saw how hard it was for them to be raised with a split family, um, you know, and the issues between their father and I and how it took their t its toll on them. And, you know, so I didn't want that again. You know, I, I didn't want that again. And I really, really felt like I was head over heels in love with this guy and he was the one for me. Mm. <laughs> So how many kids do you want to have? Are you are you still going? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? No. I feel really blessed that I have three happy, healthy, um, wonderful girls, and I feel like, you know, that's my gift from the universe, and, you know, they're my – I cherish them and treasure them, and I feel like, you know, it takes a lot of energy for me to raise my three kids and – um, do everything else I need to do. So I feel like that's, you know, I, I'm just appreciative of what I've had, and I don't want to have more kids. No, I don't at all. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm just going to um, just kind of like recap here. So you had, you're, you got pregnant again with this guy. You guys didn't, you didn't get married. Um, you were dating for a while. You had, you know, you had the kid. Um, you know, she's four now. So how many years total have you been with, this guy, or how were you with that guy, you know, the guy, uh, Frank? It was um, eight years. Wow, okay. Mm -hmm. So eight years, it's it's not working out. You started dating somebody new. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, what what is, what's the lesson here? Do you know, are you, do you regret not getting married to either of them? Like, going into this new relationship, I mean, how are you doing things? What are you asking for as f from the guy now? What are you looking for? Um, well, you know, I, I don't really regret not getting married because I don't think that that was the issue. I think it was an issue of, um, you know, I think if I had gotten married, I would have been divorced. So I don't mm -hmm. think that was the answer. I think it, it was more of a, um, you know, me making uh, choices that aren't based out of, you know, loneliness or um, low self-esteem and um, thinking more responsibly about my family, you know, my kids and how anyone I date potentially could affect them. Um, and with him, I'm just really trying to take it very slow um, and, you know, we've just been talking and gone on a couple dates. Um, so I'm just really trying to take it slow and, you know, not have sex, <laughs> definitely. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's something that I really have been clear with him about and talked to him about. And um, so, and he does have a child also, so. Okay. And condoms are good, like if you want to have sex, just FYI. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'll try that. I'll send I you heard of them some. Before. I have like a couple of hundred here in my closet. <laughs> I've never heard of those. Funny, so. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Apparently not. Um, <laughs> I'll send you a bunch. Okay. Um, <laughs> I have good ones, too. Perfect. Um, yeah. Um, 
All right. Well, what I'd like to do right now is, um, I mean, you shared a lot. What I'd like to sh what I'd like to do now is kind of like the new format here is just kind of share a couple of tips, talk to you about it. I mean, you're welcome to hang on um, and interact with me, or I'll just share some stuff. But just some, some things for that I picked up from your story, and like really for everybody listening to, to kind of help you along your way. Um, when you're picking your partner or when you're having a relationship and when kids come into play. So, um, you know, the first thing that, that really comes to mind for me with you is that uh, I think it's really important for you to decide what you want in a man and, and what you need in a man. So, like, you know, I'm a big fan of, like, writing exercises, mm -hmm. and I would make those two lists. You know, what, what am I wanting? What am I wanting for a partner? Because you've had experience with two partners that um, really aren't good matches for you. Right. You know, even if it comes back around with this last guy, uh, you know, the relationship with him, and, and again, I know a little bit more, you know, since we've, we've been talking, uh, you know, I've known you for maybe a year and a half or so or two years now. I don't know how long it's been. But, like, mm -hmm. um, so I think it's really important for you to just figure out before you enter into a new relationship, and it's fine that this new guy is here. That's wonderful. But, like, you know, you have, you've you had plenty of experience with bad men. Um, <laughs> and I know that's, you know, kind of a judgment statement, but let's just kind of go with it. And, like, mm -hmm. what are you looking for as, as far as, like, your Prince Charming? You know, like, what would be an amazing man for you? And um, I think that's cool. Good ideas. <laughs> I mean, like, I think for, uh, I mean, I would definitely, like, take some time. I mean, I, I could run through some of the stuff with you. I have some other comments. But, like, I mean, we're, you know, we have, like, 13 minutes left here, so I want to just get some stuff out. But mm -hmm. um, definitely, like, you know, take some notes and, like, take some time because I know you like writing also. And, like, mm -hmm. go through the other relationships and, like, what was bad about each one of them? And, like, what did you hate about each one of them? And really, like, shoot for the stars as far as, like, Yes, I can have more. I want more. And I really, like, I really hope that for you, that, like, you really realize that, like, you deserve more, like, that you deserve more. It's not, like, that you just want more. It's that you deserve more. Right. But you so do. I mean, I think you're an amazing person. And, Thanks. like, it just kind of breaks my heart to, like, hear your story and, um, I mean, I just, I'm just, like, amazed at your strength because, oh. <laughs> like, I would have had a breakdown, like, a million times over. Um, so, you know, going, going around again, I'm sure there's loads of fear there. And, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and the way that we get around that is by, like, really getting clear of, like, what do we want in a man? I mean, there's, like, yeah, do you have a pen and paper? I do. I'm taking notes as you're talking. Good. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Write down, like, you know, what do I want in a man? There's a lot of lists here. Like, what do I want in a man? And what do I need in a man? Two separate lists. Right. And the okay. way that you would find those lists is just by revisiting those past relationships. Mm -hmm. um, then the other thing is, is, like, you know, you're in, a, you're in a different place right now as far as relationships. You know, when we're younger, we get into a relationship and we're looking for, like, you know, la-di-da, like, happiness and, like, runs <laughs> in the park or whatever, you right. know. And, you know, you have kids now. That's the yeah. real deal. Like, you have three kids plus you. So, you know, I know you're really protective over your kids, which you should be, which any mother I would think would be. Um, so what do you need as far as, like, a man giving you in, as far as a relationship? Right. Are you asking I mean, me that now? Yeah, let me ask you. I mean, let me, let me hear that because I think that is important for you to speak out a little bit. Um, I think that, you know, um, like you said, I definitely, I think making the list and, is a really good idea to put it on paper, kind of get it out of my, you know, your head and your heart so it's real and concrete. Um, things that, you know, I already know that I want is, um, you know, I definitely want someone who I feel like is going to stand by me and support me and, you know, through thick and thin and, you know, likewise take my support and not be, you know, too independent or not want my support for reasons of whatever. But someone, because I don't feel like I had that. I feel like 
um, when things got tough, the people that I was I chose weren't able to handle it and kind of you know backed away and walked away. So that's really important to me, you know, that it's that bond of you know you have each other's back no matter what. Um, and also friendship, you know, I don't think I focused much on friendship. You know, I rushed right to the you know romance and the bed and like you know all those things. And I think you know to me friendship would be like at that time, boring, oh, you know, meet, be friends first, you know, but that's important to me now is to see, you know, that common friendship to kind of have that base and that strength to then have that you have each other's back and you know each other. Um, that's really that, beautiful. That is really beautiful. I want you to make aw. sure you write that down. Okay, That is definitely. really beautiful. Um, I, I Something came to me when you were speaking um, and we still, you know, we still tend to chat, so I'm not getting off with you right yet, right yet. But like, um, one thing that came to me that I want you to write down is that um, these words, okay? Okay. Be selfish, and this is the word. Be sel- like selfish. That word. Be selfish in your list. In your list. In your list, like L I S T S. Your okay. list that you're making up. Okay. I don't want you to write down anything that has to do with, like, what you're going to give him. Okay, yeah. This is all about you receiving. And, again, that those words, be selfish. Maybe that, like, maybe the word selfish or, like, what you want, what you need. Yeah, those are four-letter words, want, need. Those are four-letter mm-hmm. words to you. Exactly. Wow, that's amazing. I didn't even realize that. Yeah. <laughs> um. Those are four-letter words to you as in, like, dirty words. Mm-hmm. And they're not dirty words. Right. You are entitled You are entitled to that. You deserve that. Right. Yeah, I think you're right. They are. You know, you feel, um, or I feel, you know, I'd rather give than, you know what I mean? It's hard for me to ask for help or to take. You know, I kind of just, you know, trudge through on my own rather than, like you're saying, you know. Well, there's, I mean, it's it's different wording. It's not it's not giving. I mean, it's not taking. It's not even asking. It's receiving. Right. It's a different word. It's a different word. It's different meaning. Um, receiving is when you are with this man, this new man, to just kind of be, once you have your list, you're going to be able to see much clearer. You're going to be able to understand the relationship much clearer that you're developing with this new guy. But receiving is just to kind of be present and to just be aware of what's going on. And just when you, just to be open to things, to be open and to receive. You know, I kind of have this visual of like, you standing there with your arms opening and just being like, thank you, thank you, you know, type Aww, of thing. Right. That's what it's like coming to you and you're receiving it. Whereas the visual of like, if I'm going to, that I have to get or take, that's, that's mm-hmm. active pursuit, you know? Right, that's true. Mm-hmm. So keep that visual in your mind also and just, you know, when you're out with him and when you're going, whether it's with him, a new guy, whatever, anybody, just receive, and when you feel yourself starting to give, which is another word for, like, maybe trying, <laughs> and I think that just relates to you, kind of, but, like, trying, trying to make it work, um, trying to be there for him, trying to comfort him, um, you know, that's, that's kind of what I'm picking up, is that there's, it's it's a very good-hearted thing is that you're, tr- you know, you try and you care about people's feelings and you want to make sure that their needs are being met, but mm-hmm. it's really important for you to be receiving this time around. Okay. Okay. Um, as, a, as a note to the listeners, um, for people, for those of you out there who have not had kids yet, I just want to make a comment having to do with that. Um, I am, personally, I'm fine with you having, a, you know, with you or anybody or whatever, uh, about having a kid without a man or out of wedlock or whatever. So all those things are fine to me, but for you to really know yourself, for you to really love yourself, 
you need to be very clear, very aware of what you need in your life or what you need from the man if you're doing it out of wedlock or so, what you need in order to be able to feel secure when you're having that baby. So, you know, again, this is really about, like, knowing your needs and, like, again, just it comes down to, like, really, like, loving yourself. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's something that I really wanted to get across there because, you know, I think we get wrapped up in, oh, I want to have a baby or let me have a baby. Um, and, you know, we didn't go into so much in depth as far as, like, the pain that you were going through as far as, like, having the experience of having that baby and living the life and having the the relationship as it was. But um, it's very stressful. It's very painful. And really it's, it's, it's an unloving thing really to put yourself through Unless you really know, like, hey, you know what? I'm dating this guy. My biological clock is ticking. I want to have a kid. But just really get in touch with yourself and just be clear of, like, yeah, if this doesn't work out with this guy. And you know what? I think that even applies to people who are married. Um, I know when I get married, um, if I decide to get married, and if I decide to have a kid, that is definitely the thought process I'm going to go through before I have a kid, hey, if this marriage does not work out, do I really want to have a kid in my life? And if I do, how am I exactly taking care of it or what kind of support do I need to have around me? And things along those lines. And and I just feel like that's just the most loving thing that you could do to your for yourself rather than um you know, I don't know, not examining it, you know, thinking maybe you're analyzing things too much or whatever. This is about taking care of you and taking care of your own heart. And really, Barb, that's what this is about for you right now, too, in moving forward and being able to open your heart to love again Mm -hmm. is to be taking care of your heart. And this is the first step for you really to be taking care of your heart by making these lists. Okay. All right. Yeah, definitely. We have two minutes left. Um, Let me just make some quick announcements here, then I'm going to come back to you, Barb. I just want to get out these announcements. Number one, um, my website is loveguru.net. Come visit me there. Sign up for the newsletter. You'll get a free audio and a written exercise of, of, I think it's called the best kept secret to attracting the one. It'll get you on that path. Um, I get a lot of questions of, you know, where should I start? You have all these CDs on your website. Where should I start? Start with Prepare Yourself for Love. I'm doing a live workshop in New Jersey. If you're in this area, come see me. I'm going to have some stuff on the calendar for New York and for Florida coming up very soon. Um, But if you're remote, then just order it. It's an instant download, and that is the best way to start because you're going to be learning manifestation tools of how can I attract the one, how do I get started on that path. If it is something that you're going through a breakup, then you don't start with prepare yourself for love. You start with embracing a breakup, and that's on my website too. Those are the two starters um, to get you on this path. I'm also on Facebook and Twitter. My usernames on that are lovegurublair, L-O-V-E-G-U-R-U-B-L-A-I-R-E. And, um, you know, come be my friend on there or, or connect to me on Twitter. And... We have a couple seconds left here. Uh, Join us next week. We have Nicole coming on. She's going to be talking about her love affair with a married man. That is bound to be interesting. (laughs) And then the week after that, we have where I'm going to be talking about being single, lonely, and hating it, which has to do with the interview that I did last week. If you haven't listened to that yet, check the archives. So, Barb. Yes. um, Back to you. We have 60 seconds. We're counting down. any any final words, questions, or something or other that I could help you with? You know, I'm here for. Um. For yeah. No, I think you're right on. What you said definitely makes sense, and it helps me. You know, I wouldn't have thought of that myself, but it definitely makes sense. And I think, you know, you're absolutely right. You know, receiving isn't taking, and you know, to change your viewpoint on that, and you know, be open to what the universe can give. You know, and has in store is awesome. Yeah, there are so many gifts coming for you and gifts in the form of a man and a relationship. 
Okay. And during this time, you know, I had mentioned this in the beginning of, of the call. Oh, we're really running out of time here. This is, we're, we're working with new moon energy, so set your intention. And I'm going to have to go. We have to finish up here. But I send you okay. lots of love, and I send Thank everybody you. lots of love. Thank Thanks, you for Claire. being on, Barb. I love you. No problem. Love you too, right. sweetie. Uh, bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you for listening to Love Life Heart Confessions with Intuitive Heart Healer, the love guru, Blair Allison. Blair can be found on the web at loveguru.net and datingtipsfordudes.com. You can also connect with Blair on Facebook and Twitter. See you there.